they're launching a new version of the XPS 15 what feels like all the time, even though in reality it's usually once a year, I thought it'd be a good idea to check out one of these powerhouse laptops. Now today we're taking a look at the Dell XPS 15 9560, which is a step down from this year's model, which is a 9570. The 9560 actually came out last year, but it still has a wonderful array of decent specifications inside. The Dell XPS 15 9560 is what Dell are calling the world's smallest 15 inch laptop. Now this is purely down to Dell's Infinity Edge display which means they've got very minimalistic bezels. Now the Infinity Edge display has been on a number of iterations of the XPS 15 for the last 3 or 4 years now I think. Um, but what it really means is that Dell are able to fit a 15 inch, 15 .6 inch laptop into a 14 inch body. Now this paired with the aluminium cover, you've got the carbon fibre plastic keyboard and kind of mouse housing. And then everything is just really made from a very, very premium metal material. You've got a really good looking laptop. Now this particular model here hasn't got the fingerprint reader. Dell sent us one without, but usually a fingerprint reader on this particular model is here. Now Dell offer a number of customizations on their website, which I'll leave in the link in the description for you. But um, that, that leads to like sort of internal specifications, the fingerprint sensor that you can choose as an optional extra on there. But it's just an added layer of security rather than just relying on a password. Now down the right hand side you have a Kensington lock for security reasons. You have a USB 3 port and you've also got an SD card reader on there. Now this button here, if pressed, actually shows you how much battery life you've got left in the actual laptop. Which I think is quite a nice touch rather than having to rely on... The system tray, if you just quickly want to check your battery before getting your laptop out, you can click that button there. Now down the left hand side, you've got another USB 3 port, you've got a Thunderbird port and a HDMI port on there. You've also got a headphone jack, so you can use it with headphones and a microphone uh, combo if you want to plug them into both things. You've got the power input, which using, uses a traditional power brick rather than a USB Type-C port. I would have liked to have seen USB Type-C on this thing um, because I think USB Type-C is becoming more common and especially because of its size, you know, you want to keep this as small as possible. So unfortunately, you're going to have to start carrying around a power brick with you. I mean, there's only a small complaint, but USB Type-C charging would have been nice. On the back of the laptop, you can see that there are no ports. Instead, Dell used this area to vent heat from, so it's, it just acts as a heat extractor across the back of the hinge here. And it does quite a good job of doing that. Now, the biggest problem you've got with heat is on the bottom. Now, this whole section here is an extraction fan. Uh, and the biggest problem is when you put the laptop down, it blocks that port. So it, it's, it's okay, I suppose, if you're on a table. But if you're on a soft surface, like on a sofa, uh, on your legs, for example, it can get quite hot if you're using this on your lap. Uh, and on a bed, then it blocks that whole uh, and blocks those vents really, really badly. So it just gets really, really hot quite quickly. Um, I wish there would have been maybe a small vents down the side or even just a much uh, better cooling solution on the back of the laptop so you didn't have to use these, this vent at the bottom. Now the actual components do run quite hot. The hottest that we got them during our benchmarking was 82 degrees, which okay, it's not crippling to the actual performance of the laptop 82 degrees i think for a laptop is quite reasonable to be honest with you um but just so you know they do run quite hot but laptops are supposed to run quite hot anyway to be honest with you they're not supposed to be cool especially the amount of airflow that's actually inside of a laptop as well you're not going to get the coolest temperatures so one of the nicest things about this laptop is its actual display now we're treated to a wonderful vivid colorful 4k experience with the actual screen here which can display around 99% of the sRGB color spectrum, which is absolutely fantastic if you're using this laptop for things like video content creation or photography editing. Um, it works absolutely wonderfully. And even if you're just using it for media consumption, movies look really good and YouTube, even YouTube videos do look really colorful and vivid. It's a wonderful screen and definitely paired with this Infinity Edge, one of the best screens that I think I've actually seen on a laptop and Dell do a really, really good job of this. The biggest downfall I think with the screen is because it's covered in this kind of glass casing. It's very, very reflective. As you can see, it's picking up the soft boxes on my, uh, around me really, really quite well. Um, and it really does hinder your experience. So bear that in mind if you're using this in a brightly lit room. If you're using this in a room that's dimly lit, you're not going to notice it too much on here. Uh, and using it in daylight, like if you're using it in your garden, for example, is just 
impossible you can't do it because the sun will just reflect off of this screen like nobody's business the nice thing about the laptop and it's something that i didn't really use myself because i suppose i'm not used to this kind of technology is the fact that it's actually a touchscreen display so you can touch your way through various different menus however you want now the only thing i really found myself using it for was on something like photoshop where you could actually pinch the picture and make it bigger on the actual screen rather than holding down I think the shortcut is either control uh, and plus or control and stretch out on the actual touchpad here. Um, you could just put your hand up, touch the, or stretch your fingers out across the screen and it will zoom in that picture to wherever you're pinching, which I think is a really nice touch. And moving around the actual photo rather than holding down spacebar and dragging, you just drag it with your finger. Uh, and it actually works really well like that. But in reality, I didn't really use the touchscreen that often. It's just simply because I found really no use for it, even cycling through. Now, Dell usually release uh, an XPS 2-in-1 system. Unfortunately, this isn't it. That is the maximum you are able to bend the hinge on this actual laptop. So I think the touchscreen you do lose out on because you cannot turn it into a tablet like you can on the XPS 2-in-1 systems. I think that works really well there because you can fold the keyboard back on itself and use this just as a tablet. Um, but because this is a more like a traditional laptop, you're losing out on the really the functionality of the touchscreen display. You're not going to use it very, very often. Now, the another bad thing about placement on here uh, is the webcam. The webcam is actually tucked down at the bottom here, which I think... I mean, it's because they've got this infinity edge display. It is because they've got nowhere else to put the webcam. Personally, I don't know why they've included a webcam. They should have just forgot about it because this is a really horrible placement. If you are using the laptop, like anyone would on a desk, the webcam will generally just fire at your chest. You're not going to get your face in it. So there's not really any point unless you fire it up at yourself where it's just going to get your chin. Um, and then you'd, you'd have to use kind of a headset microphone. Uh, kind of combination to talk to the other person while looking into this area. Using the keyboard is also a very nice experience. The, the keys are very nicely spaced away from each other so you're not sort of crossing your fingers over all the time. The keys are backlit as well so if you're using it in less than ideal lighting conditions then you're not going to be hindered by the fact that you can't see the keyboard because they're all backlit. The touch pad as well is also smooth. Now I said in a video, a Dell laptop that we looked at, the G3 laptop, that it was quite rough, but this one it, it has gone back to being nice and smooth. So um, it, it feels as if you can track the mouse really well because you're not having to scrape your finger skin over a rough surface. So it, it just feels really, really nice to use. So the model that was sent to us features a nice 7, 7700 HQ processor, which is a mobile processor. Uh, and it was paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM. There's also inside a GTX 1050 graphics card, which is again a mobile version of that graphics card. It's not a full size card, but it was able to scrub through video timelines when we were doing video editing on here with ease. It was no problem at all. Uh, and it also played AAA titles um, at reasonably well graphical settings. I mean, we had to set to, to keep that frames per second number up we had to stick it on medium settings, but we were getting between 40 and 60 frames per second on most AAA titles. Uh, when we dropped it down to MOBAs, that's when we really saw a nice increase in frames per second, especially when you talk about the Tecnuovo favorite Heroes of the Storm, this absolutely stormed, no pun intended, through that game. Um, and it was a really nice experience and it just enables you to now play games on the go Especially with the specification that's inside now for those of you who absolutely love the numbers game I can tell you that a fire strike benchmark scored 3,403 while time spy scored 1385 now for both of those tests I had to set the battery to best performance mode because I did run it on an average performance uh, And the numbers just weren't good enough at all but as soon as I switched it over to best performance, then those numbers greatly increased um, and so did the quality of the games that we played. Of course, battery life, you're going to have to keep in mind if you are set to best performance, it's just going to churn out a lot more of your battery life. But that's the trade off of being able to play your games at medium settings and to be able to play games on the go. So you're probably going to have to carry a charger with you when you go out anyway. One of the biggest complaints I had while playing, especially the AAA title games, was fan noise. Now, this thing was if you launch a game, there's no doubt that it's going to have to increase the fan to cool down the components inside. It was so loud. Um, and it really saw me reaching towards a pair of headphones when it started to do this because the laptop speakers aren't the best. Um, so everything just 
was get, it just became annoying once that fan started wearing really loud everything became annoying and you just wanted to drown it out with um with your headphones but 98 percent of the time when i wasn't playing games uh even when i was doing uh video editing on this laptop on premiere pro and after effects the fan was extremely quiet you you wouldn't even know it's there but it was just on the games that the components obviously have to work a lot harder so they need a lot more cooling so that's where the fan really kicked in and the fact that the actual grill of the fan as i said is on the bottom i think it needs to work a lot harder because the table surface is just blocking off that airflow now a nice thing about the laptop is the fact that dell are running its dell performance management system which basically means it uses as much battery power as needed to run the components to complete the task at hand so if you're browsing the internet for example it's not going to need that much cpu power or gpu power so the battery life can last a lot longer now inside you'll find a 56 watt battery which lasts for me i would say even when i was playing games throughout the day will last for around five hours which i think for a laptop like this is pretty standard it's pretty good it's not gonna it's not gonna get you through a whole day of consistent working but it will certainly last a decent five hours or so depending on the tasks you're doing. I mean, you can increase that if you lower the brightness of the screen. If you use this as just a basic web browser all day, you can increase that a lot. But if you wanna be playing games, which if you go for this laptop, inevitably you do wanna play games, then it's gonna run really well. So I know this laptop is now a year old and they have released the 9570, which houses an Intel i9 processor, or you have the choice to go for the i9 processor. and. You've got a GTX 1050 Ti inside. I think there might be a 1060 version. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I know this isn't new. This isn't a new laptop by any means. Um, but it's still an absolutely wonderful offering to those of you who want to do video editing or photo editing or game on the go. It's got a decent battery life, media consumption. It's got a wonderful screen, um, which has some really, really nice colors. Yes, there are some downfalls like the webcam placement. Um, and the weight as well actually if you are carrying this laptop around it is relatively heavy compared to I don't know a HP or a Lenovo laptop 15.6 laptop because it's made of aluminium um, it, the whole body is aluminium and I think even in the inside the screen is one of the heaviest bits um, it's just a wonderful laptop and it's got some really nice components in there and scored some really nice scores on the benchmarking that we did the 3D benchmark stuff uh, and it's just an all-round really, really good laptop. If if I had the money, I would definitely upgrade to this laptop for sure, just for my workflow. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the Dell XPS 15 9560. If you enjoyed this review, then click that like button. Please do subscribe to keep up with all of our latest tech and gaming videos. And also let us know in the description what you think about this laptop, whether it's something that you could see yourself buying or whether you would spend the extra money on the 9570 from this year or whether you want to go for any other kind of gaming laptop on the market. Let me know what you think of the, of the Dell XPS 15. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.